Hi guys, how's it going today? My name is Jim Hellums. We're going to be going ahead and working on doing some scent work training with our dogs today. There are many different types of ways of training your dog on how to do this. There are a couple organizations out there right now and a couple individuals that are definitely out there with DVDs and stuff like that. There's the canine scent work guys. Um, their method is going to be a little bit different than what I use today. There's um, Andrew Ramsey who's out there teaching the program. And I know UKC is actually coming up with a program and they're going to be um, starting out nationally. Um, I actually kind of use a combination of both and we'll be going through that a little bit. What our goal is with this um, training is to achieve our Dog Scout Scent Discrimination Badge. So that is our ultimate goal with this test. Um, some of the things that we're going to need, you are going to need some boxes. Um, when I first start training, I do like to use similar boxes. Um, as we progress and the dogs learn more and more, I actually have to use different shapes and different sizes. But for today's assignment, we're just going to be using similar boxes. Um, I don't really want to confuse the dogs, I want to make it relatively easy for them. And we'll normally have a container inside, uh, mainly just because I don't want to really um, contaminate the box with the scent works. But when I'm working, and you can see this box already here is already marked. So we know this is going to be our food dispensing box. This is where the treats are going to be. And you do need to be careful because if you actually use your hand and you put treats in here and you start touching of your other boxes, you can contaminate those boxes. So we'll talk a little bit more about that as we actually start the process, but you do want to start with nice clean boxes. Um, you may like um, a treat dispensing device. I'm not really big on these, I just haven't really gotten into using them, but they can be really good to let the dog know, yes, I just found out where that treat is and this comes into a little bit later on the training. As we get going, we're actually going to be wanting to teach our dogs to go by scents, different types of scents. In this case here, we have a little kit. Um, and this kit actually has three different scents that we can work with. comes with a dispensing device where we actually put the scent in it. It's self-contained. It actually has a magnet, so you can actually stick it on metal objects, underneath chairs, stuff like that. comes with the Q-tips, and we'll also get into that a little bit more as well. As we start working with our dogs, most of the times our dogs will be working on leash when we get started. Some may wish to continue with their leash throughout their dog's training. Some may at some point in time actually like their dogs to be off leash. If you are going to be working with your dog on leash, it is recommended to have a flat buckled collar and a quick release type leash so it can be taken on and off as you need to. What works even better is actually having a harness on your dog. The reason for that is you can, your dogs can actually learn the difference. All right, are we just going out for a walk, we got our collar and our leash on, or are we going to work? So if you actually come into your, your office space, your building, your outside area, and you say, oh, I'm gonna actually going to want to start tracking or scent work, and you go to and change from that flat buckle collar to an actual harness, and then actually using a tracking type lead, then your dogs will go, oh, okay, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. And it really does make a difference. My dogs know when I go out pulling, um, and I pull out that pulling harness, he goes, I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. So it can really make a difference as your training progresses. And sometimes I tell people, look, your first couple of classes, you may want to just, you're trying to get, decide whether you like this, whether your dog is into it. You may just stay with your flat buckle collar to start with, but you should consider training over, um, and switching over to your harness and a tracking type lead um, as you go through. And what I mean by a tracking type lead, it is going to be a longer than your six foot. It's probably going to be anywhere from a, a 10 to 30, even a 40 foot lead generally a little bit thinner. A lot of times the handle is cut out of it, so if the dog is out running around, the handle is not going to get caught on something, a branch, a stick underneath a door. Uh, it just makes it a little bit safer and easier for the dogs. So as we're going to go ahead and get started, what we'll be doing is we'll be putting our boxes down. We're going to be going ahead and putting one treat, uh, and in this case we're assuming our dogs are food made and motivated, and we can go through the ways of actually testing that as we go through. Does my dog truly like this food? Right? Is this a highly motivated item? Or is my dog actually more um, toy motivated? So there are different training techniques there. In this case, we know all three dogs that we're going to be working with today are extremely um, food motivated. So we will be working with food today. So what we'll be doing is we'll be putting our boxes down on the floor. And in this case, I'm only using probably three, probably three boxes just for the filming purposes and just for showing. Um, normally I would do this in a much larger area, um, 
In most cases, I'll actually use up to 10 or 12 boxes so the dogs actually have something to search. Now, what our first goal is just to tell, teach the dog that we need to actually search. Right? We are not teaching the dogs how to use their nose. Um, one study I heard, they said 50 to 60% of a dog's brain is strictly headed towards or knowledge based towards their nose, okay? Sent memory, right? They know if my friend was on vacation because they haven't um, read that P-mail in a week, all right? So they know, hey, this dog hasn't been here in a week, or they can say, hey, this dog was just here. I can tell if this dog was in heat. Um, they can say, hey, I remember finding food here, and I can still smell that scent. So we're not technically teaching the dog how to use their nose. They're, it's ingrained in them. They know how to do it. What we're teaching them is to now actually go by our human rules. We want you to find this type of scent, whether it's a bomb dog, a drug dog, or in our case, we're just starting out and we want to get our dogs to learn um, a birch oil scent. So we're not teaching the dog how to scent. We're teaching them, hey, this is what I want you to find for me. So it's the human's rules that we're actually going towards. So like I said, we're going to be placing these boxes out. And our first thing is to get the dog to go, start to search on cue. So if I tell my dog search or find, whichever words you like to use, you want that dog to start searching. So what we'll be doing is we'll be taking our first box. Right? All the boxes will be left open, open lid like this. We're going to be putting some food down. All right, right inside the box, putting it down, and then we're going to have our dogs search. All right, we're just going to let them go, and they're going to sniff. All right, once they find that food, we're going to tell them, yes, or you could click, yes, good dog, and actually go ahead and let them eat out of that cup and have their treat. All right, as we start going, we'll, we'll be moving the boxes from place to place. We'll start to hide the box a little bit, and then we can even start to close the boxes. So now they can't visually find it. Now they actually have to really use their sense. They need to know when they, when they get to this box, yes, that's where the food is because they can smell it. They cannot see it. All right? As we start to do that, we're going to go ahead and um, if your dog has a really good default sit and they offer that to you, we can go ahead and click for that. You do have to start to figure out as we get going with this, what do, do we want our dog's cue to be? Preferably, it'd be nice if they offered you a cue on their own and you worked with that versus trying to teach them something else. And when I say them offering us a cue, are they staring at that box? Are they pointing at it with their foot? Are they just sitting directly in front of it? Are they going to lay down? Are they going to bark? Right? We are going to need to learn what our dog's cue is going to be. Okay? What are they going to tell us when they find something? Because as we start to go through this, our ultimate goal is we're going to take a room like this, we're going to hide something somewhere, and we're just going to let our dog search. And that dog is going to need to tell us when they found it. Now, there are a couple things that we could have problems with. Some dogs will start to get really close. I mean, they could come into a room if we're using birch oil, and the dog can probably already know where that scent is, or they can at least smell it in the air. They may start to offer you default behavior in terms of false behavior. They may just come in and sit and look at you and go, hey, it's here, so treat me. All right, so as we get going, we always want to be treating our dogs where that scent is. And the way we're going to start to actually transition them is we're going to actually use our boxes. It's got that food in there. They've now learned to search. They've learned to find. Okay, now they're finding that food. What we'll actually start to do now is pair that scent oil with that food or whatever object we're going to be using. So in this case, we're going to be starting with birch oil. So after several weeks, several hours of actual practicing with our dogs, several sessions, we'll now actually start pairing the two together. And so when they find it, well, I like to feed my dog in this, at the same location that they find it so that their nose is basically touching that location and eating right there in that spot. So I'm just going to go ahead and get set up and then we'll actually demonstrate with one of the dogs and we'll kind of film how we get started. Any questions before we move on, guys? No. Good. No. All right.